Hello, welcome to my talk on principal component analysis. I'm Vincent Hall. My background is in machine learning science. So the, so the reason I want to talk about principal component analysis is because it's really a quite brilliant um, statistical method that is widely used and it's just, it's just so good that you really want to use it. You really want to know about it. You will come across it, I'm sure. There's me. So when you're analyzing data, it's not surprising if you have something very complex. You may have climate data, you may have stock market data, or data on your customers and understanding how to, how to keep them happy. But you could quickly get into dozens or thousands of variables, and that's just too much for, for a human mind to keep track of and to understand. And certainly it will also slow down any machine learning model that you train with this data. So we need help. PCA comes in, knight in shining armor to smash down all the all these different variables to just just exactly what we need and nothing more. And let's start with start trying to understand it with uh, a real example. So imagine that you're trying to make really good wine. And what exactly do you have to control and, and what can you do to make good wine? What makes good wine? Soil pH, the grape type, how much rain during the growth season, what's fermentation temperature, the sunlight, the age of wine. There are many other different factors that, that you may want to consider. But humans can't keep track of all of this data and, and can't even visualize four dimensions or more. So that's just too much. We need something to simplify this. PCA is an excellent tool in this case. So what is PCA? It's a principal component analysis again and we're looking for principal components. So the PC you can easily get to dozens or thousands of variables. This basically table here is meant to represent lots of different columns of data, lots of different variables. And one problem is that there's just too much and many of these variables might be not relevant to what we're trying to find and also they might be highly correlated so when you increase this variable x you're pretty much sure to increase the y there's some spread on that but if you put the lots of different variables into a machine learning method or even just your head to try and understand some outcome, then you're just doing the work multiple times if you're using correlated variables. So PCA can massively reduce that. And so you can take you can take a data set of maybe thousands of maybe one thousand different variables and you can compress it down to just five factors, for example. You can choose the number of factors that you want to keep based on a few a few things. And also all of the variables will be uncorrelated. So as you increase any of these five variables, all of the others will not care. It, they won't be affected. They're independent. So these are the principal components. And it will totally trim the fat. You won't have anything in there that you don't need. How does it work? So it discovers the directions of most variants. If you consider this data set here, uh, got these two axes that we're currently looking at, and those probably make sense in the real world. They're probably things that you and I can understand, like soil pH, the acidity, or the temperature. And they don't, unfortunately, they don't make much sense in the data space. So what, what seems to make more sense is the, the spread of the data. So as you vary this thing in the, in the red direction, the red arrow, you can change quite a lot about, about the outcome. And so this is our first principal component, our PC number one. That's the most variance. And then independent of that, which is at 90 degrees, so orthogonal, you have the second principal component. In, in the green going in this direction. So the the red direction may be perhaps 80% of the variance in the data. And 
the green may be another 10 or 15 percent so already we've got most of the variance in the data just from the first few variables so so PCA ranks these it, it rotates the data to different axes instead of these ones which don't make so much sense in the data space and then it ranks them and then zeroes out or you can just forget about the other variables and, and these principal components are like combinations of real variables you, for, hap, for example maybe you're trying to make good wine uh, what are the factors what are the important things in in doing that perhaps the most important thing is stuff that you can control as a human the, the type of grape maybe you can change the soil so you can control the, the acidity maybe you can control a few other things but then nature will control other things so that's the second PC and why you know big reason why this is important why why you want to use PCA is because if you have uh, something like logistic regression it takes a certain amount of computation for a computer to, to go through before it gets the answer so this OD here with D in brackets it means for every new dimension of data for every new variable that you add you increase the computational requirements so you increase the time that it takes to process this and if you have 10 times as many variables then it takes 10 times as long which is actually pretty quick a lot of machine learning methods uh, it would take a lot longer as you as you add more variables so anyway if you have a thousand variables and that will that will take you a thousand times and if you only have five variables that will take you only time five so if you use PCA thousand divided by five I believe is 200 so you'll, you'll speed up your computation 200 times it's pretty cool in the real world yes yeah, so some other examples that you might face so stock market finance what are the factors driving driving the stock price you have to know this before you can know uh, how to invest when to buy when to sell at least that's one way of doing it in genetics really high dimensional data there's just billions of, of different DNA letters and then there are lots of the thousands of different genes and then lots of different amounts of these genes are working they are they upregulated are they downregulated when do they switch on lots of different things to consider so you probably really want to reduce that simplify that PCA can can help you there image processing here's an example from paper one here using principal component analysis in image processing and from my own work I work with Jaguar Land Rover they recently got a new logo um, we use it for data compression it was one of the methods we use the um, Jaguar Land Rover just had vastly too much data to handle in in the cars so some of the cars data compression like principal component analysis came and made that much easier easier to store is it to transfer to another machine so perhaps it will be helpful to use an analogy to understand PCA say that you you're organizing a party and what makes a good party is it the drink like the wine we mentioned is it is it food seating music number of balloons the venue the people you invite uh, so that's a lot to keep track of and a lot to understand but perhaps you can reduce it perhaps PCA would reduce that to just like the party vibe and maybe the, the vibe would be like the drinks the, the people you invite the the music the venue and then the party comfort maybe that would be like the food and the the seating maybe the weather so PCA can help to simplify uh, such a problem but there are limitations to PCA so it does assume a few things like it assumes there's a linear relationship uh, previously I showed you correlated and uncorrelated variables but if they're not 
linear related, linearly related, then it will probably give you this non-meaningful result. So here, if we look at A and B, there is a relationship. It's just non-linear. But PCA can't see that, doesn't understand that. And also, PCA assumes that the direction of the most variance is the B's knees. It's the most important thing. Uh, that doesn't necessarily translate to the real world, and maybe there are some subtle things that you need to notice. Those are the most important factors. Also, computational time is important. So, PCA unfortunately does it scales up the computational time quite quickly as you as you increase dimensions of data. However. The good news is that you only have to do it once. So if you're processing your data and you're trying lots of different machine learning methods, first, one of the early things you can do is put it through PCA and then it will speed up all of your machine learning methods. You don't have to do it multiple times. So you still get that speed up. Okay, in summary, principal component analysis, you uh, have masses of data, it's a powerful technique that can reduce the size of, of the data. And this is what it looks like. Just lets you focus on the most important uh, directions of variance of the data. And it rotates to different axes. So you just have a few variables to worry about. That's great. And putting PC into practice. Remember that there are limitations and PCA can really help you deal with the high dimensional data when you when you are putting this into practice you can remember the party example or another one of the examples and it can help you turn chaos into simplicity just two things to worry about like the party vibe the party comfort it's not all seeing perhaps it doesn't understand certain things about parties like Uncle Bob hates loud music so maybe don't invite him or don't have loud music. Uh, or maybe your mate is allergic to prawn that's being served. So that's a factor to worry about. And so it's a, a powerful method, powerful maths that can be used by machines, but always, always make sure to check it with your brain as well. In conclusion, yeah, it's a great st statistical tool for reducing dimensionality. It has really broad use. I'm sure you'll come across it as you're analyzing data. It does assume linearity and that variance is the most important thing, but it does have high computational cost. As this is uh, talking about machine learning and AI, I'll tell you some of my images come from mid-journey AI generated. Uh, others come from Unsplash or Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, so some links to research as well. Thanks for listening and Maybe next time we can talk about other cool statistical things. Cheers.